We learned last week, the Lord says, to do or not to do, we listen. He tells us before to do something or not to do something. We have faith in what He tells us. It's not that we step out on faith and see if He's there, but we learned last week that we need to hear from Him before we make that move. We saw the disciples couldn't, couldn't heal that little boy. And Jesus told them that it was because of your lack of belief. But I showed you that that doesn't mean believing in the Lord, in Jesus. The lack of belief there meant the lack of faith. So we need, we need to pray for more faith. We're going to see it again in, in Mark, where we're going to start. In Mark chapter 9, we're going to read verses 21 through 24, and then 28 and 29. It says, And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, Of a child. So Jesus said, How long has this been happening with him? And the father says he's been having it since he was a child, a baby. Remember in the Bible, when it calls someone a child, this person can be a teenager. Because remember, David couldn't join the army because he was still a child. You had to be 20 years old or older to join the army. If anything under 20, you could use consider still a child. So this, this boy right here could have been anywhere between there. And in verse 22, And oft times it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. This is where unbelief comes in. The boy's father says, If, and he's talking to Jesus, If you can. Is that faith? The boy's father said, If. And in verse 23, Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Then he says, If you only could believe, you need to believe, period. That's what he's telling them. And if you believe, you'll see that all things are possible. Amen? Amen. We have a God. We have a Lord. There's nothing impossible for him to do. Nothing. But do we believe that? I mean, can we really comprehend that and take it in? There, there is nothing my God can't do. You know, with our little brains that we have, and they're little, we take the Word of God. It'll give us power to believe. Right. To believe Him. We need to believe Him. There's so many things in the Word of God that we're like, I mean, we read it and we're like, okay, but do we really believe what He's saying? We need, like this man, he said, he told him, you need to believe. In verse 24, And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. The father says, without a doubt. Without a doubt. He said, I believe. I believe in you. But help me with my lack of faith in your words. That's what he's saying. And that's what we need to do. Lord, we believe you. We believe you are the Son of God. We believe we have salvation. But these other things that I read in the Word, help me with that. There's things I read in here, and it's hard for me to put my, my faith in that because it's kind of hard to believe. But we need to believe it. It's the Word of God. We believe Jesus is the Son of God, right? Yeah. But the things He says in the Word, we have a hard, many of us have a hard time with. Then we'll drop down to verse 28. And it says, And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could not we cast him out? And he said unto them, Jesus, This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Now remember, this is, this is Mark. We read last week in Matthew's, the same story. Last week he said it was because you were lack, uh, it was because of your unbelief. Now in this in Mark he adds to it. He says this can only be answered by prayer and fasting. When we saw, when they saw that he wasn't being healed, this is what they needed to do. They needed to stop and start praying and fasting. That's what they needed to do. Because when you're praying and fasting, that brings you closer to the Lord. And when you get closer to the Lord, you believe His words more. 
And when you believe His words more, your faith grows. So that's why we need to pray and fast. Get closer to the Lord so our faith can grow. And this is what they needed to do. Jesus said, you need to do, to do this, you need to pray and fast. Since it didn't happen when you first did it, and I said I gave reasons last week why, maybe why it didn't happen, but in this in this chap in this chapter of Mark, he's saying you need to pray and fast. Now people are like, what's fasting? Well, fasting is just closer, getting close to the Lord. You stop. What there's different kind of fasting. You stop this or you stop that, just. To show the Lord how close you're wanting to get to Him for whatever it is you're praying for. Doesn't that does not mean He's going to answer that prayer because you prayed and you fast. You don't put the Lord on the spot. You can't put Him on the spot. Well, I did this. Now you have to answer my prayer. No, that's not the way it works. When He says praying and fasting, like I said, that make that puts you puts us closer to Him. I hope you understand that. Yeah. Let me show you why men don't have faith of God. Since the beginning of time, men has always wanted to rule. Either their own life or others. Since the beginning of time, they've always wanted to rule. And we'll find this in Genesis. Nimrod was in the bloodline of Noah. After the flood, he was the first antichrist. He began his own kingdom in Shinar. And we're going to see this in Genesis chapter 10 verses 8 through 10 it says and Cush begat Nimrod which Nimrod means rebel Cush begot Nimrod he began to be a mighty one in the earth he was a mighty hunter before the Lord wherefore it is said even as Nimrod the mighty hunter before the Lord in verse 10 and the beginning of his kingdom and the beginning of his kingdom was Baal which Baal means confusion. And Iraq and Akkad and Kalmai in the land of Shinar. So he's saying this, um, he was a mighty hunter. Well, we're going to see what kind of mighty hunter he was. Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 through 9. And the whole earth was, at, was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick, and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us, this is men speaking, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to the city and to the tower which the children of men built. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Now you have men who say that God was worried that men might become like gods. The Bible has already told us what man's imagination was. It's already said. In Genesis 6 5, it says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every, and, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. This is man without the Lord. Man without the Lord is evil continually. I don't care how more you are, how good you are. You without the Lord, in your heart, you have in your evil in you. Genesis 8.21 For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. This is us without the Lord. This is, we're just evil. We were born into sin. It's, it's in our nature to be evil. We have religions and cults that say, deep down inside everyone has goodness in them. They just have to let it out. Well, the goodness of man here is getting away from God. That's what religions say. Well, we're, we're looking at what men are trying to do. Make their own way to heaven. Make their own name. This is what men are trying to do. In verse 7, 
the Lord says, Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Now remember in chapter 10, verse 9 and 10 that I read, they called Nimrod a mighty hunter. It was talking about, it wasn't talking about animals. He was talking about men here. He was looking for men to, to build, his, build his kingdom. That's what he was doing. Not only did he want to build a tower, he also wanted to build a city. Like it said back in verse 4, and the Lord stopped them from doing both. Cults want to cut themselves off from God completely. Cults have always wanted to do that. This is what man has always wanted to do. Use their knowledge so they couldn't, so they would need a God. This is why we have governments. This is why we have religions run by man. Run by man. Religions are run by man. That's why we have these college, uh, college knowledge people who go to college to get all this knowledge. This is all centered on man. Instead of having peace and happiness, which that's what the God that's what God wanted for us when He created Adam and Eve, that's what He wanted for them. But what happened? In Genesis two seventeen, God tells them, "But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou shalt eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die." Them wanting this knowledge has brought a lot of sin. Has, this knowledge has brought a, men can't sleep at night. They can't sleep at night because they're stressed out. They're depressed because they're finding a hard time to meet that uh, achievement of uh, being independent. Men don't want a God. Men don't want anything. They want to they make it on their own. That's what they want. And it's been like that, like I said, since the beginning of the time. They want to be independent instead of dependent on the Lord. Right. What a sin. What a sin. Mm -hmm. I am very dependent on the Lord. Amen. Very dependent. I don't want independency because if I was to have that, I'd be in trouble. Yeah. Men are so smart that they're about to bring destruction on themselves. I mean, look, not only uh, uh, these wars that are going on, this is all men, all these wars that are going on, but pretty soon we'll be out of water, drinking water. These chemicals they have that they put on the crops and everything, it's killing us. This is man's knowledge. This is where it's getting us. This, the knowledge of men is getting us to where we're destroying ourselves. We, Christians, we believe and have faith in the Word of God, in the Bible. It's just like it says in John 20, 29. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. So the Lord is saying we're blessed. Because we haven't seen them. The disciples saw Jesus. Yeah. And they believed. We believe and we hadn't seen them. And he says we're blessed for that. We have faith that God can do anything he wants. We know that. But a lot of times we put that faith in front of his will. Like saying I'm going to have faith that God will be there when I move there. Or do whatever it is. God's going to be there when I make this move. Or we, have, or we say, I have faith that God wants me to do this or wants me to do whatever. And, but the thing is, the person who's saying that haven't, hasn't even heard from God. They haven't even heard. Like Last week I showed you many times how people, the, the men of God heard from God and then acted. We have people today that say these things. Step out on faith and hope the Lord's there. When He tells us whatever, and when we hear it, it comes alive in our spirit. When God tells us, it comes alive in our spirit. In Romans ten seventeen, it says, "So then, faith, faith, cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God." It plainly, I mean, it plainly says it right here. We hear first. 
we hear first. And a lot of times He speaks to us speaks to us through His words. And then we move. But the way we do it today is we move and hope He's there. That's not faith. That's not faith. Hebrews 11 verses 1 and 2. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good report. This word hope means it hasn't happened yet. But we believe and we have faith that He will do what He says. That we believe that. God says, hey, give your heart to me, give your life to me, and you're going to be with me in heaven. We believe that. Right? We believe that. I mean, it's just His words. We hear it, but we have faith in it. We believe, yeah, okay, I'm giving my life to Him, I'm giving my heart to Him, and I'm going to be in heaven when I die or when the rapture comes. We believe that. And the evidence of things not seen, we read His words and they tell us things of the future. That's our evidence. God's Word, but it hasn't come about yet. Just like the elders did, right, right, right here where it says, For by the elders obtain a good report. Elders are speaking about the ones in the Old Testament. Like Abraham and all them. That's what it's talking about. It's talking like, about like Noah. He built the boat. They didn't have no ocean to put the boat in. It hadn't even rained. But what did Noah do? He heard from God. God said, Noah, build a boat. What did Noah do? He built it. Even though it looked so stupid. Now think about it. No ocean. And it hadn't even rained. Yeah. You know, the crops grew, grew, the Bible says, by the dew of the day. That's the way that the crops grew. So here Noah is building a boat. He looked silly. He looked ridiculous, okay? But he did it, why? Because God told him to. And where was his faith? In God. In God. God said, do it. So his belief, his faith in God, he did it. Even though it made him look stupid, but he did it. Because God told him to. Same thing with Abraham. God told Abraham, pick up your family and everything. Leave this land where you grew up. Leave this land and go to this land. Now, that's not easy to do. Really? Take up your family and move to another land. Abraham had to have faith. Really? If God wants me to move to this land, then he's going to take care of everything. So, this is what I'm good. That God told me to do it. This is what I'm going to do. There's many more I could show you like this. I'll be here all night because there's a lot of elders in the Old Testament that God told them to do things and they did it. And a lot of those things didn't make sense. They couldn't understand it, but they did it. Amen? Amen. But all these men, one thing they all had in common, they all heard God first before they did anything. They just didn't assume He'd be there. It says faith comes by hearing. We hear from God first before we do anything. Not the way they teach it. Like I said, step out on faith and hope God is there. That is not that. Every time I hear that in the church with a preacher or a teacher, whoever says it, it makes me want to puke. It really does. That is not Bible faith. The faith we have is not from the Bible. The faith we have is what you call it is assumption. That's what they're doing. Just having an assumption that I hope God's going to be there. Amen. This is what many of us need help in. To believe His words. All of us. Even mature Christians. We need help to believe all His words. Not just baby Christians. We're talking about mature Christians. We need to believe what Hebrews 12.2 says. It says, Keep our eyes on Jesus because He is the author and finisher of our faith. He is the author because... Our faith is born from Him. Who gave us the faith? The Lord gave us the faith. It's not our great faith. It's not our faith at all. The Lord gave us our faith. In Ephesians 2.8 For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift from God. So God is saying, that faith is not even from you. It's from me. So faith comes from the Lord. 
2 Peter 1.1 1, 1, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We obtained it from the Lord. And also in Acts 14.27 And when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them and had opened the door of faith in, unto the Gentiles. Another place in Acts, there was a man born lame since birth and every day he asked for money. People would pass by and he would ask for money. Depending on, for, depending on people for help. And one day Peter and John passed by and they told him, Hey, we don't have any money, but we, what we do have is the power of, of Jesus. And they told him, Get up and walk. He didn't start praising, and he did. But he didn't start praising Peter and John. It says that he started to praise God. We need to learn that everything is from the Lord. If we're sick and someone lays hands on us or anoints us with oil, whatever, and we get healed, just don't give the man the credit. Give the Lord the credit. If he uses a doctor, don't give the doctor the credit. It's from the Lord. Sometimes the Lord does it divinely where He heals you right there on the spot. And sometimes He might use a man. But it's all from the Lord. It's all from the Lord. In Acts 3.16 And His name through faith in His name hath made this man strong whom you see and know yea, the faith which by Him hath given Him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. The faith which is by Him hath given Him. So where's our faith come from? It comes from God. We can't ever, ever say, Look what great faith I have. Because we don't have any. The only true faith that we have is from God. He gives it to us. Same thing in Mark chapter 10. There was a man who was blind and he heard that Jesus was walking by. Mark 10. <clears throat> verses 47 and 48. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Now we need to notice that these two verses, the man is calling Jesus, Son of David. He's not calling him Lord. He's calling him Jesus, Son of David. Right, he's recognizing that Jesus in the, is, is in the bloodline of David. Addressing him as a man. Son of David. In verse 51, we'll read, And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The, the blind man said unto him, Lord, now he's calling him Lord, that I might receive my sight. Now he's recognizing him as son of God, not son of David, because now he's needing a miracle. So now he's recognizing him as, as son of God instead of son of David. That's the way he was looking at him at first, as a man. But then he calls him Lord. Now when he calls him Lord, what he's saying is, hey, you're God. And you can heal me. Amen? Amen. In verse 22, I mean 52, And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. As soon as he recognized him as Lord and Jesus blessed him, what did he do? He started to follow Jesus. We need to follow Jesus even if he doesn't bless us. He's given us salvation, which that's the biggest blessing of all. He's given us salvation. He has saved us from hell. Anything after that is a bonus for us. Anything after that is just a bonus. The number one thing, He has saved us from hell. So that's all we should ask. That's all we need to say, Lord. We can say, okay, Lord, whatever, whatever else happens from here, I got this, and this is all I need. When I die, I'm going to go live with you. Amen. Amen. What the Lord was saying is, because you believe in me, 
Call on Him, Lord. You are healed. It wasn't faith in healing. Because if it was... Uh, if it was that way, He would have said in verse 51 that you will give me back my sight. But He said, might. So it wasn't that He had faith in the healing. He had faith in the Lord. He had faith in the Son of God. Because like I said, if it was faith in healing, He wouldn't have said might. He would have said, heal me from this sickness. You understand what I'm saying? This guy didn't have great faith. He just believed that this man that he was speaking to was the Lord, Son of God. Doesn't say anything about him having great faith. He didn't. He really didn't even recognize the Lord, Jesus as Lord, until he needed something. That's when he recognized him as Lord. When Jesus said, what can I do for you? Then he recognized him as the Son of God. Faith doesn't heal anyway. Faith does not heal. You got a lot of teachings going out there that faith heals. God does. God heals. <coughs> I can show you many places in the Bible where people were healed and had no faith at all. I can show you in the Bible. So it's not faith that heals you. God heals you. We got to remember that. All these preachers who have this faith healing it's because of your great faith you can be healed. Or if you did, wasn't healed, it's because you, you didn't have enough faith. That is garbage. The Bible doesn't teach that whatsoever. Faith healing is not when you say to yourself over and over, I'm healed, I'm healed, like they do. That's not faith healing. That falls, that falls under positive thinking. That's what that falls under. It falls under mind over matter. You're trying to... Tell yourself, I'm healed, I'm healed. No, that is not faith healing. The Lord says in Zechariah 4, 6, Not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit, saith the Lord. It's by His Spirit we get healed. Not, not by us, not by our mighty faith. Because like I said, we don't have any faith. God gave us the faith that we do have. Not by power. What power we have without Jesus? None. Nothing. The Lord says, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. Amen. Amen. When we cross a bridge, we trust that that bridge is going to support us, right? You go, I mean, we have a lot of bridges around here. When you go over that bridge, you're, you have faith that bridge is going to hold you, right? That's why you cross it. Because if you didn't think that, faith, that bridge could hold you, would you cross it? No, but you, we have faith in that bridge built by man would hold us. We put money in the bank. We have faith in the bank that our money is safe. Okay? So we, if we have faith in these things, why do we have a hard time believing the Word of God? Listen to me. Why are we having a hard time believing the Word of God? Not of man, of God. We have trust in what man built. Why can't we trust in the God who created man? Amen? Do you hear me? Amen. This teaching is this teaching on faith. What I'm really pushing is we have to believe the Word of God. That's where our faith needs to be. You want strong faith, believe the Word of God. Believe it. Don't just read it like it's a story. Believe what He says. And it says that He is the finisher of our faith. It means once we go to heaven, we're with Him. We no longer need faith. Because now we see Him. Amen? Amen. <laughs> what a glorious day that will be. <laughs> we don't need faith no more. Because now we see Him. Now we know. Okay? Amen. Amen. We'll see Him face to face. We all have the same faith. Because it all comes from the Lord, right? It all comes from Him. The Lord gives it to Him. Gives it to us. So we all have faith. He, he gives us all the same faith. But then we need to see how much of that faith are we going to use by the way we live. Okay? Did y'all hear me? We're going to see how much of that faith are we going to use by the way we live. Let's read the last part of Romans. Chapter 12, verse 3. The last part of that verse says, To thank soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Now, I'm going to read this out of the Living Bible because it makes it a little bit easier to understand what it's saying. In the Living Bible it says, be honest in your evaluation of yourselves 
measuring yourselves by the faith God has given us. So we've got to measure that faith. And he says to be honest with ourselves. So to, to measure our faith, what we needed, that was verse 3. To measure that faith, let's go back to verse 1 and 2. Verse 1, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. The Lord says, hey, this is what I'm asking you to do is, is reasonable. This, this is not hard to do. Do you hear what I'm saying? God said, this is easy for us to do. To present our bodies as a living sacrifice. To be holy. Acceptable unto Him. Now what kind of animals did they sacrifice in the Old Testament? Clean. Sure. Clean. Pure animals. They didn't, do, they didn't sacrifice the sick ones. They sacrificed the healthy ones. The pures of animals. And that's the way we should be living. A pure life. Holy. In the Lord. It's hard to walk with the Lord when you know you're not living right. It's hard to pray for anybody or anything knowing that your prayer is not getting no further than the ceiling. And I taught that last week. There's a lot of things that can hinder prayer. But if we're pure and holy and walking with Him, God hears us. That is acceptable unto Him. Because we, already, we have already given the Lord our heart and our soul. But right here it says to present our bodies because he's already got our heart and soul, right? He's already got the inner self. Now he's saying, I, I want your body also. Present your body as a living sacrifice. These bodies have sexual needs, desires. But we got to bring that under, under control with the Holy Spirit. We got to sacrifice what the body wants. Do you understand what I'm saying? The body wants this. But that's wrong now. Okay? So that's a sacrifice. No, I can't do that no more. My body says it wants that body. Well, I can't do that no more. That's sin. Unless you're married. But when we're young, especially youth, teenagers, yeah. you're, you're, these, these boys, who, man. I'm not going to get into that, but you know what I'm talking about. But we got to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. We got to tell our body, hey, no, we don't do that. Because now we're saved on the inside, our soul and our heart. Now we got to bring it out and have our bodies be uh, submissive to what our heart and our soul says. I hope you understand what I was trying to put there. Yeah. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9, 27, I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to, training it to do what it should. So we need to train our bodies. The inside we got clean, but now we got to clean the, the body part on the outside, the physical part, the physical needs. I'm not going to go any further on that one. And then verse 2, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Be not conformed to this world. Be honest with yourselves. How many times, how many things do we do because the world does it? That's the way the world does it. So that's the way we do it. Nobody has to say anything. Just, just think about it. How, how many things do we do because that's the way they do it? Think about it. Christians, Christians have been doing this for a long time. Women. Women used to dress like the Lord wants women to dress, fully clothed. But now you have Christian women, Christian women, who dress. If they were to dress that way in the old times, they would be prostitutes. They would be whores. But now the way they dress, we don't look at it that way. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. We got to stop conforming to the window. The world accepts it. And about, about 10 years later, is accepted in the church. It's been doing it. And the Lord says, be not conformed to this world. But the churches, we Christians, we've been doing it for a long time. Men, men used to respect women. We don't respect women anymore. All we want is one thing from women. 
until we might find the one we love, then it's different. But until then, there's only one thing man wants from women. Do we respect them? Hmm. Now in the old days, women were respected by men. Even though men were still the same, but they were respected. It's not that way anymore. Sex before marriage used to be a sin. But now the world looks at it. There's nothing wrong with sex before marriage. And believe it or not, Christians are doing the same thing. I know Christians, I'm talking about Christians, who are having sex before marriage. Because their friends are doing it. The world does it. The world doesn't see anything wrong with it. So they do it. Be not conformed to this world. Now, all this that I'm saying right now, where is your faith? Is your faith in doing it God's way? Or is your faith in doing it the world's way? That's why he says, check, check yourself out. Where is your faith that I've given you? We have to keep, or we have to keep up with the Joneses. For that to happen, that's why women have to work. If you want to keep up with the Joneses, the husband doesn't make enough money. So now the women has to go to work so we can keep up with the Joneses. Instead of the women staying home, raising the children, take care of the husband, like the Bible says, they're out working. So they can have what the neighbor has or what their friends have. So they can keep up with them. That's from the world. The Lord says, be not conformed to that. Live the way I want you to live. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Men, whatever money we make, that's, and we're walking with the Lord, the, Lord's, the Lord is saying, that is enough for you. I've given you what you need. Now, if you want more than that, then you're going beyond what God wants you to have. And that's why I, even Christians, the husband and the wife works. And who raises the kids? Most of the time, daycares. Mm -hmm. And then it says, Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. When we allow the Lord to transform us, we'll be like what it says in 2 Corinthians 5.17. It says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, old things, Old things, old things is talking about friends, any kind of darkness, old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. We become new. We're transformed into the renewal of being Christ like. So, anything that was of darkness, the old things, and we're talking about friends, not just things you did, but people you hung around with. He says, all that's passed away. Behold, all things are become new. We have a new way of living. We should have new friends. Now, the friends we had before, it's not that we had just shut ourselves off from them. We could still, you know, talk to them. But to do the things they do, because if they're living in darkness, how in the heck are we going to do the things they're doing when they're living in darkness? Right. If we're living in light. So the Lord says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let the Lord renew our mind. There are many Christians who don't want to be transformed because it means for men, we can't lust no more. That's wrong. I mean, that's one of the things. Also, another thing for men, now we got to take responsibility of the wife and the children. We got to teach them in the way of the Lord, teach them God's Word. A lot of men don't want to do that. They're not transforming themselves by the way the Lord wants them to live. They're not renewing their mind with the Lord, with the Word of God. Do you hear me? This is the men. They'd rather, they'd rather be out fishing, hunting, whatever. Let the wife take the kids to church. Men don't want to respond. They don't want to transform the renewing of their mind. They don't want to do that. Women, they don't want to be submissive to their husbands. Many women want to show that they don't need a man. And that's Christian women too. It's just not lost women. Christian women. I've seen it in Christian women. They want to show they don't need a man. That's the way the world does it. The world has definitely showed that women are independent. We don't need men. We don't even need men to have babies. I mean, how many times have you seen that on TV? Actresses who go and have babies without getting married. Without even having sex. They go and adopt. We don't need, to we don't need a man to have a baby. I'll just go adopt one. We don't need men. 
men, women, women are wanting to be independent from men. Is that the way the Lord showed us? No. So we measure our faith by these two verses. They will show us how much faith we have. You know, do, do we allow ourselves to be conformed to this world? Or do we have faith in the word of God and live the way his words say? Are we allowing him to transform our minds to his way? Or are we just giving him the way, the way, keeping it the way it was, the way it is? So this is the way we measure our faith. Either we have a lot of faith and we believe and obey God's words. Or we have very little faith and we don't accept the commandments of God. We don't expect, we don't accept many of his words. By the way, many of the commandments of God, they sound like commandments, but they're promises. If you read them right, if you read them in the spirit, these commandments are promises. I'll give you just one example. And there's many, but I'll give you one. Matthew 6.33 But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. So God is saying, hey, seek me first, seek my righteousness, and I promise you all these things will be added to you, whatever it is that you need. So commandments, don't look at them as commandments. We got to look at, stop looking at them as a command. Look at it as a promise. God has promised me this. Amen. Amen. This is what we need. This is where our faith needs to be in God's words. And this is, this is something I'm going to really be pushing on this teaching. We have to have Faith is believing what God says. And if He says to do something, do it. If He says not to do it, then don't do it. But don't just, don't you move first and see if God's there. That's not faith. Like I said before. That's not faith. That's what churches are teaching. I, I, I hear it. I see it all the time. That's why I'm having this teaching. What is biblical faith? Biblical faith is hearing first and then doing. Amen?